Howdy Commanders, Echo here. Today we're going to take a look at the Azure Lane Commanders and do a bit of an overview of them. This is the Azure Lane Rerun Week celebration of the birthday anniversary update cycle. And everyone is getting at least one Azure Lane Commander crate this week just by completing the missions in the Missions tab. There are additionally some random crates available in the store for purchase under the special tab that I'm currently in right now, either as a six pack bundle or individually as solo crates. Do keep in mind that if you were to buy the six pack and complete the mission that also grants you one for free, you would get a total of seven. Since there are only six Azure Link Commanders in the lineup right now, you would get one duplicate by doing that, which means you would get the full six roster and one personal combination for one of those six at random. Or you could buy five solos, get the one for free, and have a full roster. Or if you were around in the winter when we got four of these Azure Lane Commanders for free, then you could complete the mission that's available this week, get one more for free, spend 2,500 doubloons to get a sixth, and fill up your roster of these ladies. Today we're going to discuss and rate these Azure Lane Commanders. I'm going to give you my thoughts on them and help you decide if you want to spend your resources on buying these Commanders or promoting them. We'll be looking at several different criteria when evaluating them. We'll look at each Azure Lane Commander's base trait, both for her utility and for that base trait's utility as an inspiration for other Commanders. We're going to look at each Azure Lane Commander's unique trait that comes specifically just for her. We're going to look at her whole suite of other traits and how those work in concert with each other. We're going to discuss the Azure Lane Commander's use on the ship that bears her same name, as well as other ships in that same line, be it cruisers or battleships. And then we're also going to briefly discuss any potential cross-line potential. Azure Lane Cruiser Commanders on battleships, Azure Lane Battleship Commanders on destroyers, etc. And lastly, before we get into it, I've grouped these six commanders into sort of three tiers or categories. Uh, we've got the trash tier, the somewhat situational tier, and the great thumbs up tier. And without further ado, let's kick things off at the trash tier by talking about Azure Lane Dunkirk, the French battleship commander from the crossover. We'll first look at her base trait, Floodgate. This reduces flooding damage to your ship by up to 20% at her max level. This is not a very good base trait. Uh, just don't get hit by torpedoes. Use good situational awareness and good map awareness. Work on your torpedo beat skills. Judicious use of your damage con and your heals can overcome most flooding damage by either avoiding it entirely preventing most of it, and healing what's left. This is just not a very good base trait. It comes into play so rarely. I mean, there are many Battleship games you play that you never even get hit by a single torpedo, and even if you do, you might not take flooding damage, or you can put it out basically instantly. This is also not a good inspiration base trait for use on other Battleship commanders around the game. You're going to take this over Cunningham, Hyde, Azure Lane Nelson, Joajard, Takagi, Jellico, Sheer, Azure Lane Hipper. I, I don't ever see a time where you would take this over any one of those captains or even some others. So I just don't think it has any value as a base trait for inspirations. For unique trait, Frontal Fire reduces your shell switch time by up to 100% at max level, and to have this maxed, she has to be 12 Legendary 2. It also reduces the damage of your shells every time they hit an enemy by 5%. This is not a very good, unique trait for a commander. Because every single time you hit something with a shell, you're going to have 5% of your damage just taken away automatically. A lot of times that can make or break the difference. How many times have you been shooting at somebody and 
you just barely end up killing them. Well, now, if you're using this trait, they're going to slink away with 5% of their hit points left. Right? And give up 5% damage on every single shell for, at best, instantaneous shell switch. Well, that only works if all of your main batteries are reloaded. And often with battleships, you'll be in a situation where maybe the front guns have fired and then you use the back turrets on another target or you had to swing the stern out to use those back turrets so your turrets aren't completely synced up. This happens often in battleships and you can't use that 0% auto shell switch if your turrets are not synced. Also, if one of them gets knocked out, you can't use this, or if it's out of sync from having gotten knocked out but then getting repaired. So the rare instances where you're going to be in a position where, oh, I have AP loaded, but I want HE, or vice versa, A, they don't even hardly ever come up. You're better off just usually just shooting whatever you have loaded and then hitting switch at the beginning of the next reload cycle. But even on the rare instances that those do come up, it comes up more often that your sh your turrets are out of sync anyway, and you wouldn't even be able to use this trait. I think it's total trash, and it's worth almost nothing. In terms of combos for the rest of her traits, you can combine marksmanship with gyrating drill bits, and then pair that with master mechanic. That's really the main reason you would want to use one of these Azure Lane commanders. Uh, but... You know, I don't really think that Flammable Cannoneer or Brawler are particularly good skills for the French. I don't really use them on the French battleships. Anjouajard with can Cannoneer or Gepat with Brawler, respectively. I usually just run not one for the nuisance in slot one on both of those guys. And you also don't want to pick a legendary slot skill, so... You know, you're functionally giving up anything useful in slot 1 and legendary slot just to combine gyrating drill bits and marksmanship with Master Mechanic. I'd, I don't really think that that's that worthwhile of a combo. When we talk about using Azure Lane Dunkirk specifically on the Dunkirk, those set of skills that you probably want to end up selecting that I just mentioned, they don't really stack or pair well with the Dunkirk, which is a fast, nimble, maneuverable, sort of all guns up front arrangement that reload quickly and traverse quickly. Gyrony drill bits, marksmanship, and master mechanic don't necessarily complement that type of a ship terribly well to begin with. And if you're selecting Brawler, you're hurting the range of that ship just for a percentage of reload. Well, the Dunkirk already has a good reload, so you're not getting that much out of that and you're nerfing the range. And Flammable Cannoneer, sure, you're going to help yourself out in range and precision, but at the risk of catching fire, I don't think Cannoneer is a very good choice on any battleship. So using her on her ship namesake, I don't think is very worthwhile. Nor do I think she's terribly good up and down the rest of the line for the Tech Tree French battleships, because... Some of the French battleship tech tree ships want Gaprat on there. I'm thinking specifically of like the Normandy, which is just a super fast, in a straight line, nimble, maneuverable, get in tight, dodge, weave, make a miss type of battleship that does really well with Gaprat, brawler skill, his base trait, extra heals. And the rest of the battleship lines, thinking of things like uh, Lyon, for example, with its smaller but more numerous guns, that wants Joajard on there to help keep you at range, keep you a little safer, you know, increase that AP pen on those smaller guns with Joajard's base skill. So I don't really think that her suite of skills really complements any battleship for the French terribly well. They don't really want a hybrid commander. They either want a brawler build or they want an accuracy build. And lastly, discussing cross line potential, they're basically is none for Azure Lane Dunkirk. The only possible exception would be on the Charles Martel, the Tier 7 Tech Tree Cruiser, because of Master Mechanic giving you an extra heal that makes that extra heal and the others a little better, but you're way better off running 
either Lemonnier or Rue with fully packed, because you'll get the extra heal and the extra other consumables. Sure, those heals won't be quite as good as if you had Master Mechanic, but the heal on a Tier 7 Cruiser isn't make or break, but having additional charges of your other consumables, as well as a whole host of skills that help cruisers, is way better. Overall, I don't really have much uh, value in Azure Lane Dunkirk. That's why I placed her in what I'm calling the trash tier. Uh, I feel sorry for you if you got only her out of your free crate. I wouldn't put much, if any, promotion orders into her. I don't think she's worth using on any of the French battleships or even as an inspiration. Now let's move on to Azure Lane Belfast. Cruiser Commander for the Brits. Let's look at her base trait, Out of Nowhere. This reduces the ship's bloom time after firing the main battery from within a smoke screen by up to 20% at max level. This is 4 seconds of total time. Uh, I don't put much stock in this base trait. Uh, you usually want to be shooting on cooldown, especially when you're in a smoke screen. Uh, so by having your bloom reduce in, at best, 16 seconds instead of 20 seconds, I mean, this means that you're already spotted. So you've shot from within a smoke screen, and you're probably sitting still because you're in a smoke screen, a British cruiser smoke screen, which is tiny, and now you're spotted. You're going to wait 16 seconds, or probably more because you're probably not going to have her max level, while sitting still in your smoke screen and not shooting, it's, it doesn't help you, like, basically at all. You're usually incurring a smoke fire penalty because someone's rushing you into your smoke. Most of the British cruisers have pretty small smoke fire penalties. So if you are incurring that smoke fire penalty, someone is right on top of you. And sure, you can use your torps in the tech tree ships uh, to kind of defend yourself, but you're also spotted now from within that smoke. And now they can start shooting at you, they know exactly where you're at, so on and so forth. And if you're in a position where a reduced bloom time is going to help you with your smoke fire penalty, it's probably a bit too late for it to make much of a difference. I'd rather have Frasier or Tenant's base traits helping me out rather than this. Her unique trait, smoke screen. It makes your smoke a little bit bigger, goes up by 5% at each level of mastery for a max of 20, and it further reduces your ship's bloom time stacking with her base trait. So it will be better than 4 seconds when and if you have smoke screen selected. But you think, oh, that looks pretty decent, and then you look at the nerf for this and it removes a charge of your smoke generator. And then we need to immediately move into her other skill discussion because you can also note that there is no fully packed. So the British cruisers come with two stock and then you're going to take this skill, remove one of them, and not be able to make up for that with a fully packed and legendary slot, giving you just one smoke screen. That's just a little bit bigger, 20% at max level, which for her, again, since it's slot 2, would be 12 legendary 2. It's not like it lasts any longer on the clock. It's not like it deploys for any longer, so you can kind of creep along with it for a little while. No, it, it just is slightly larger. What, so a friend can get in there with you or something? I don't know. You got a little more room to play around with on the throttle. You don't generally want to be doing that in the British cruisers because they're so glidey. It's easy to kind of accidentally slip out of the smoke screen. I just don't put any stock in this skill and I don't think it's any good with that minus one smoke generator charge. It'd be great if it didn't have that. It'd be a worthwhile unique trait and her value would go way up. But when you stack that with no fully packed and legendary slot, it's a no-go for me. Yes, you can combine when talking about the rest of her skills ingenious with some of the more offensive skills in slots two, three, and four kind of creating a hybrid of Tenant with Frasier. But, you know, is that really worth on the British cruisers giving up fully packed? And I guess this gets us further into the discussion of using her on the ships. On Belfast specifically, 
not even fully packed is a straight automatic no-go. You want to have three radars, three smoke screens, three sonars to protect you yourself while you're in that smoke screen. Early, mid, late game radar. What happens when you spawn at Bravo on shards and you want to use a radar within the first 15 to 20 seconds of the game to spot out that DD that's just on the other side of that little teeny island in the middle of Bravo on shards? And then you got to have one mid game and then you got to have one late game to chase down a DD to help close it out. You just got to have three charges of all your consumables in a Belfast. And to be quite honest, the rest of the British cruisers, because they all have heels up and down the line. More than any other cruiser line, fully packed is, I would say, necessary and 100% always take on the entirety of the British cruiser lines up and down. Exeter, Belfast, you got to have fully packed. So because I don't think she has much value on the Belfast specifically or the rest of the line, I'd say it's a no-go for that. Now, here's where it gets a little weird when we talk about cross-line potential. Uh, technically, all of these slots can sort of help you uh, in a destroyer. Her, her base trait technically helps you. Ingenious and Piercer do add some value to a destroyer. Smokescreen, I actually think, is better as a trait to use on destroyers for the Brits because you've got so many charges of smoke that, you know, making them a little bigger, since they do deploy for such a short time, giving up one of them might actually be worth that. When you stack the smoke fire penalty with her base trait, you know, I can actually see this smoke screen or her unique trait being worthwhile on the destroyers for the Brits. And full speed ahead technically does also help you with rudder shift if you don't feel like using smoke screen in slot 2 on the DDs. Sponge technically helps you, you're less likely to get things like your torpedo tubes knocked out. And actually, acoustic chamber is what made me first think of this is having a third charge of the sonar and making it better on the British DDs actually was a bit intriguing to me and was what got me thinking about the cross-line potential for this. However, there's a strong, like, pump the brakes moment with the fact that there's no unstoppable choice in Legendary slot, which for me on a DD would make it an automatic no-go. For those of you that want to try playing around without having unstoppable, it's a maybe, kind of a meme build, something maybe to try out. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for anything even remotely competitive. It could be maybe fun in AI or something, or like as a joke with a division, but overall it wouldn't be that great, but it's at least possible. Uh, by the book does get you something on a destroyer. It doesn't hurt you, so it, I guess there is potential there. But, you know, I'd say Azure Lane Belfast, also not terribly great. Technically, probably slightly better than Azure Lane Dunkirk, but I'd also put her in the kind of trash tier. Now we're moving on to what I'm calling the sort of situationally good Azure Lane commanders, and we're first taking a look at Azure Lane Hood. Her base trait, Torpedo Charmer, reduces incoming torpedo damage to your boat by up to 10% at max level, half a percent per level of mastery. This is okay as a base trait, I would say, since flooding chance is directly related to the amount of damage that a torpedo does to you on impact. This also functionally reduces your incoming flood chance. I mean, obviously there's a whole host of factors that calculate the flood chance, but one of those factors is that alpha strike of that torpedo. The harder it hits, the more likely it is to set a flood. So this is not only reducing the alpha strike of the torp, but it's reducing your flood chance and any subsequent flood damage you end up taking. So it's kind of doing double duty in a sort of hidden way as well, uh, but it's always good to reduce torpedo alpha strike damage on you. But I would say that, you know, it's not the best base trait for a battleship commander out there by far, uh, especially as an inspiration for someone else. You know, there are many other better choices. Uh, so in terms of on her, it it's not bad. It definitely helps. Uh, in terms of inspirations, I'd say it doesn't have a whole lot of value. You know, just try to avoid getting torpedoed in the first place, and then it doesn't come into play. Moving on to her unique trait called Royal Navy's Glory, 
This uh, does a couple of things. It helps you cycle the damage control a little bit faster, as well as give you a little bump in your battleship maximum speed. I think this is a pretty decent, unique trait. It doesn't have any drawbacks, so you know it only helps you. Um, one of the main kind of dings, if you will, or drawbacks of Royal Navy's Glory, though it's not a stat-based drawback, is the fact that it's in slot 3. Which means that to bring it to Mastery Level 4, you have to be Level 14 Legendary 3, and not 12 Legendary 2 like we've seen so far on the Azure Lane Commanders. This means an additional investment of 7 more Blue Commendations, 50 Promotion Orders, and an Insignia to max this out over those Azure Lane Commanders who have their unique trait in slot 2. This doesn't have anything to do with the trait itself, it's just a consideration when you're thinking about leveling her and making maximum use of Royal Navy's glory. It's going to take you quite a heavier investment to make this trait really uh, maximize its full potential. And I just want you to keep that in mind. When we talk about combining her traits and maybe setting her up for a build, you know, the ability to stack Brawler in slot 1, Gyrating Drill Bits in slot 2, her unique trait in slot 3, which I would encourage you to use, and Master Mechanic in slot 4, this is actually a pretty awesome kind of push in, be aggressive, you know, be that boulder or, or bowling ball rolling through the pin setup of the enemy formation, aggressively push into the caps, you know, kind of just roll downhill type of build. And especially when you stack that with something like a, you know, Hyde, Azure Lane Nelson, Takagi, Jellico sort of constellation of inspirations to kind of increase her survivability because you will be getting shot at more, you'll be taking more damage, etc. So you want to increase your survivability. Or you could think about stacking that set of traits and skills rather with a sort of Madden, Kedrov, Giprat sort of constellation of inspirations to really emphasize that like get in there, be aggressive, turret traverse, reload type of component of a brawling build. You can really make a pretty good up in your face type of battleship build. Uh, and I think that her namesake ship, the Hood, would be the best ship in the Royal Navy's battleship lineup, at least as of right now, for doing that. It already has the highest base speed of any British uh, battleship, as well as it's got the sonar, so you can push, you know, not have to worry so much about DDs surprising you around corners, or, you know, from their smoke screens, you can push into their smokes and be aggressive into their smoke screens, not have to worry about torps as much. And especially when you combine all of that, that sort of aggro, in-your-face, pushing type build and mentality with her base trait, the value of her base trait does go up a little bit. You know, the hood itself has pretty decent uh, guns in terms of its reload speed and traverse and has great AP shells, decent ballistics and firing trajectory. So I think that the hood itself, with hood on her, could be a pretty decent you know, kind of aggro, in-your-face, aggressive build. Or, with that high base speed, especially if you stack it with a Grapot Inspiration, a sort of out-on-the-flank, you know, hit-him-in-the-sides type of build. Either or, depending on what the situation calls for. I think that Azure Lane Hood's viability on other British battleships is a little more diminished. I don't think she's quite as good on there, trying to set up that kind of brawler, in-your-face type of build. The rest of the British battleships... Uh, they, they definitely want to be a little further back, not quite as up in your face. And though she could be viable on those ships, not saying she wouldn't work, I, I don't think she would be quite as good as plugging in either Madden or Cunningham or even Azure Lane Nelson, which we'll get to in a bit. And lastly, in terms of like cross-class potential, I don't really think that there's basically any cross-class potential with Azure Lane Hood on the British cruisers or destroyers. And one last reminder, if you do have her and level her up, put some commendations into her and unlock legendary slot, just do not pick either one of these. They're, they're both not good. To move into the other commander that I'm placing in sort of the situationally good category, we've got Admiral Hipper. 
Her base trait, Firewall, reduces burning damage to your ship, which is critical, it's any type of ship, by up to 10% at max level. I personally don't find this base trait to be terribly useful on cruisers, as burning damage to cruisers is not all that much, and is usually kind of a middling factor, more of an annoyance than what's going to end up taking you down, most likely. Uh, but, as an inspiration, particularly for battleships, this is a pretty decent base trait. I would put it, you know, kind of in the middle of the pack. Definitely not a front runner for every ship and every build, but definitely solid. If you're running Flammable Cannoneer, you could stack this with, you know, maybe Shear or something so that you're less likely to get set on fire in the first place, and in the unlikely event that you do, that fire is going to do a little bit less damage. So, as a base trait, it's sort of middle of the pack. For her, it's not terribly great, but it doesn't hurt you. And as an inspiration elsewhere across the rest of the game, it's pretty solid. Her unique trait, Vice Defense, it's sort of a better version of the Light Fortress skill you would find on the British cruiser captains. Uh, it does decrease the damage that you're going to take in a cruiser, which is always nice, at the cost of some damage control party reload time. Personally, I, I think that Sponge is better, particularly for the German cruisers, if you're going to go for a survivability approach in slot 3, uh, because it's doing largely the same amount of work. Sure, it's not exactly as much. Vice Defense does protect you from more of that damage, but... The armament HP and armament repair time is critical, especially on the German cruisers, because they want their torps to be ready to go at all times. And when they get knocked out, you can't use them. So not only are you less well protected against armament damage, but you're also increasing that damage control party reload time, which means if your torps do get knocked out, it's going to take that much longer to get them back online. When it's competing against Sponge, I just don't see a reason to pick Vice Defense over Sponge. And it's also competing against Punch Through, which it's German AP for cruisers. Like, you, that's what you want to accentuate and make that much better. So in this slot, both of these other choices are better. And similarly to Hood, Azure Lane Hood, we saw her trait in slot 3. Hippers is also in slot 3, which means you've got to dump an extra 50 promotion orders, 7 blue accommodations, and an insignia to make this thing maxed out. I would have loved to see Vice Defense in slot 2 competing against Igniter. German HE shells, pretty lackluster, not a whole lot of reason to invest in them. Vice Defense in slot 2 would have been awesome. But since it's in slot 3, I just don't think it's got much value. When you stack the fact that you've got to invest in it more to max it out, and it's competing against two other skills that, for these ships in particular, I, th I think are better. When we talk about combining her skills and making a bit of a build, you know, the obvious choices are, you know, an ingenious stacked with a sort of offensive build here, fixated igniter punch through type of combo, um, you know, kind of building the best of both worlds between Von Bühler and Lutjens. But again, you're, you're running into the situation with these Azure Lane Cruiser Commanders of not having fully packed in Legendary slot. And, you know, although that does appear to be a pretty decent thing at first, you know, Ingenious plus this offensive combo suite in 2 through 4, you really got to think about it for a minute. Think about the ships that you might be putting her on. Graf Spee and Hipper want heals from fully packed. Prinz Eugen wants a reload from fully packed. The Königsberg and the Nuremberg, with their turrets to the rear of the ship, they want to kite, so they want things like full speed ahead uh, and sponge to, you know, make them more uh, survivable in that kiting role. So when you start breaking it down ship by ship by ship, this, this combo is not terribly attractive. Uh, perhaps on the York... You know, combining Ingenious with these things, you know, maybe the omission of fully packed is not the end of the world on the York, uh, since you don't have a heal and so on and so forth. Taking refill station on the York helps, since it is that heavy cruiser, longer reload. But, you know, to invest heavily in one commander for one tier 6 cruiser that is arguably 
not one of the best <laughs> at the tier, shall we say. Uh, is that really an investment that you want to make? That's your call. Personally, it's not one I would make. Uh, when she does sort of kind of half the job of Lutyens and half the job of Mueller, both of whom I think are better on the York in their own way and can kind of min-max one direction or the other, I, I just don't see that the Hipper on the York is a terribly good choice either. And that's the best choice. Her on any other boat is an even worse option than either of the other two. It, it all, it largely comes down at least to the not having fully packed and that's really a huge thing that's hamstringing her sure you can sort of make up for that with acoustic chamber but then you're sacrificing fixated so why even go with her in the first place as a hybrid build you might as well just go lutians and go survivability i don't know lastly in terms of cross ship potential there really is largely none i mean technically you could put her on a destroyer and not be wasting any slot, but, I mean, really, over Von Spee or even Bay, like, this is just not a good set of choices for the destroyers. Battleships, forget about it. So, for final thoughts on Hipper, you know, where Hood was the, you know, sort of not great as an inspiration, but pretty decent on the line, Hipper here is sort of the inverse of that, where she's not terribly good on the line, but pretty strong uh, with her base trait as an inspiration. So, for you battleship mains out there, especially if you want to run a flammable cannoneer build, you might want to consider putting some points into Hipper and uh, slot her particularly alongside a Shear, and you might find that that fire spamming menace out there is a little bit less menacing. Next we'll move on to the category of these Azure Lane commanders that I'm calling the Great Category, and we're starting with Azure Lane Otago. Her base trait, Death From Below, reduces your torpedo detection at a flat rate of 10 meters per level, up to a max of 200 meters, or 0.2 kilometers off your torpedo detection. Now as a base trait for the Japanese cruisers, this isn't the greatest base trait. There are definitely some out there that are better, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, the Japanese cruiser torps are kind of a set it and forget it type of torpedo, a little slow in the water, kind of more of a zoning thing, or right up in your face. They know you're there. You know they're there. Uh, just get people off your back around a corner type of situation. But reducing the detectability, they often surprise people so this helps with that and catch them even more off guard and give them an even bigger surprise. So it definitely doesn't hurt on Japanese cruisers. Now, where this base trait is amazing is as an inspiration. In case y'all haven't figured it out, I'm a destroyer main. And when these Azure Lane commanders were first announced and I saw this, I immediately started salivating. She is an amazing inspiration on, of course, the Japanese destroyer torpedoes because that's one of the ways that those torps are balanced is with a high detectability so by dropping that down a little bit you help overcome that balancing factor on the germans who have amazingly fast torpedoes this helps you land even more of them since their alpha strike is a little weak landing an extra one or two every salvo definitely helps the germans quite a bit the french oh my gosh the French are arguably the best torpedo boats in the game when you stack a high-level Otago with an Abanyu. And even for a tier wit sort of torpedo boat focus build for the Brits. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you use tier wit on your British destroyers, but if you are, then she's a great inspiration for that as well. She's an amazing inspiration on the majority of the lines with the majority of the commanders. You can basically not go wrong slotting her in. Even the Americans, because... The Americans already have such a low detectability. Now, there are better choices for the Americans, for sure. But I think that it's at least a viable option, and then there's an argument to be made for putting a Tago even on the Americans. Really, the Soviets are the only ones where it's like not a good option. But if you're talking strictly Tashkent, Leningrad, and Gremiashi, the ones that can stealth torp, there's even potentially an argument there. If you're only playing those three ships out of the Soviet destroyer line, then maybe you could even go for it there. I mean, literally you're talking, there's an argument to be made for basically 
every destroyer line the majority of the boats in every destroyer line. It's, it's just insane how good of a base trait she has as an inspiration. Let's talk about her unique trait. Arsonist. This increases your HE shell damage and fire chance on these Japanese cruiser HE shells at the, what I would say is not a very big cost of incoming damage to your cruiser. So wait, you're telling me that every time I pull the trigger with HE, they're going to do 10% more damage and have an 8% better fire chance at the expense of when a shell happens to hit me at an angle that it does damage, it does 10% more? Okay, thank you very much. That 8% extra fire chance is 3% better than a maxed out igniter and a maxed out burn it down stacked together. This is an amazing trait, particularly for those of us captains who understand map awareness, situational awareness, can protect ourselves with islands, friendly or enemy smoke screens, protect ourselves by armor angling and kiting away, dodge tanking, etc. If you can combine all of those things, you can functionally mitigate the 10% incoming damage nerf on this skill. But let's say you're not that great at all those things and you are a little worried about your ability to mitigate that, just go down to slot 3 and take Sponge and mitigate quite a bit of, not the entirety of, but a lot of the nerf from Arsonist. The Japanese Cruiser HE shells are already amazing, and this skill just makes them basically god tier. You can also stack Punch Through to make what are already really good AP shells on the Japanese Cruisers really good and even better. Like, you're blowing my mind here with this build. One of the main balancing factors of the Japanese cruisers is their slow turret traverse, so you can take Ingenious in slot 1 to mitigate a lot of that, protect your modules with that 7% splash damage, and having that targeted indicator is another way that you can mitigate some of the nerf that comes with Arsonist. Oh, I'm being targeted by a couple of people. Better let the guns go quiet and disengage. I just, this, she's so, so good. The one kind of drawback to her is that she does not come with fully packed. And that leads me into my discussion of her on her namesake ship. Since the Otago has a heal, and you are going to take 10% more damage from every shell that damages you, it can be a bit of a high-risk, high-reward type of play to put her on the Otago. The same goes for the Megami. Since that ship, Tier 7 Cruiser, Tech Tree also has a heal, not having fully packed can, again, be a bit of a high risk, high reward. The whole of tier 7, and now legendary tier especially, is sort of built around and sort of, you know, catered to the fact that now all these tier 7 cruisers have heals. So, by giving up fully packed, you are cutting into the, the number of them. Uh, but, getting refill station in lieu of that, isn't the worst thing in the world because another balancing factor for the Japanese cruisers is their long reload time. So cutting a few tenths of a second off of that with refill station is not the end of the world. I think where she really shines on the IJN cruisers is from the Miyoko at tier six tech tree all the way down with the exception of the tier three premium Iwaki. Uh, but the rest of the tech tree all the way down, when you stack all this stuff up, I mean, and you don't need to worry about a fully packed because you don't have heals, it's just, it's lights out. She's amazing. And you can definitely get some devastation going with Azure Lane Otago on the Japanese cruisers from tier 6 on down. And lastly, for Azure Lane, and lastly in the great category, we've got Azure Lane Nelson. Looking at her base trait, like a rock, it reduces the incoming damage to your battleship by up to 6% at max level. This base trait is amazing for her. The British battleships can tend to be a little squishy and have a little bit of problems with survivability. So this base trait is great for her on the British battleships. It is also really great as an inspiration. There are other ships and other lines and other build setups that also have problems with survivability and being a bit squishy, so using her as an inspiration is amazing. Her unique trait, Big 7, 
increases the AP and HE shell damage by 16% each at the cost of 15% armor penetration on both shell types. Now, this does look like a fairly significant nerf at first, but you've got to consider that HE is basically going to penetrate if it's going to penetrate. And even if it doesn't, it's still going to shatter. You're still going to likely get a fire, particularly with the British battleships. You're half the time you're firing them for the fire chance, not just the shell, you know, not the shell damage. So, eh, so what that's going to cost you very rarely. And the British battleship AP with that short fuse, you don't really get that kind of double, triple citadel knockout punch on another battleship from 14 kilometers away anyway all that often with the British battleships as well. You're often aiming kind of upper belt, superstructure, that kind of location where you don't need a huge amount of armor penetration. So though this is a pretty substantial nerf, when you dig into it a little more and think about how you're using the British battleship shells, where you're aiming, etc., it's actually not that much of a functional nerf. And when you trade that off for 16% more shell damage, the odd shell or two here and there across the entire game that, you know, doesn't do damage when it would have, you're going to make up for that in 16% extra damage every single time you hit. And if you are worried about the penetration, particularly of the AP shells, you can always slot in a high-level Joajard as an inspiration to mitigate quite a bit of that 15%. Not the entirety of it, but it will help kind of offset that. And I think that amount of difference with a high-level Joajard is basically going to make this skill broken. The skill is also pretty great because it's in slot 2, which means it's maxed out at level 12, legendary 2, and you can get the max benefit from it at that level. Keep in mind that the nerf stays at that 15% while the shell damage increases as you level her up. So to get the max benefit from the same nerf, you do have to have that slot 2 maxed out at full mastery. For skill combos, you'll notice that I run nothing in slot 1 because I think that Flammable Cannoneer and Brawler are not good choices for the British battleships. If I am running Madden or Cunningham, I run not the one for Nuisance. Uh, I think that the British battleships do not benefit from Flammable Cannoneer or Brawler enough to justify the nerfs that come with these perks. And as with the other Azure Lane, Dunkirk, and Hood battleship commanders, we see that we don't pick anything in Legendary slot because both of these are bad choices. So in spite of the fact that I'm not running any in slot 1, or legendary slot, the combination of Big 7 for unique trait with marksmanship and master mechanic stacked with her like a rock base trait is enough to make her, for me in my opinion, a better choice over Madden and Cunningham. Also, in slot 3, you can swap out marksmanship if you're on a ship that you find to be particularly accurate, or maybe you're running a Cunningham inspiration for the dispersion slash precision and you don't mind your accuracy and you don't really want the rudder shift nerf just slot in firefighter and then you're helping overcome the fire spam menace like there's it's an amazing set of combination of skills you know let's say you are worried about the armor penetration in slot two you don't want to run big seven okay throw gyrating drill bits on there particularly if on you're on a ship like the hood that can give up a little bit of speed for example like you almost can't go wrong with her skill setup as long as you're not picking anything in Legendary and, in my opinion, nothing in Slot 1 either. Azure Lane Nelson on HMS Nelson is, like, god tier, in my opinion. 16-inch guns with Big 7, the zombie heal that comes on the Nelson with Master Mechanic. Good night! Lights out! It's over! My battleship damage record is to be fair not terribly high as i'm not a battleship main but it is held on the nelson with nelson in it with this skill setup and it could be even better my inspirations could be focused even more on damage or damage per minute and it's just it's an amazing setup nelson on the nelson in my opinion is by far the best azure lane on her namesake ship 
without a doubt. Azure Lane Nelson is also great on the other British battleships. I've been running her on the rest of the Tech Tree British battleships on War Spite. I don't own Hood or Vanguard, but I would assume that she would do well on those as well. And it's I've not had any issues. Big 7 doesn't impact my penetration. Her like a rock, rock trait plus master mechanic increases your survivability well enough that, you know, there's no issues there. And she's just great on the whole of all the rest of the British battleships. There's nothing really here for cross-line potential, so, you know, don't try to slot her in on your British cruisers or British destroyers. And lastly, since I think she is arguably the best Azure Lane Nelson commander, I do want to talk a bit about potential inspirations for her. You could slot in Halloween event Hyde, Jellico, Takagi, or Sheer. Uh, any combination of those guys for a bit of more survivability, especially if you're on Nelson, just really double down on that survivability zombie heal approach. You could go Kedrov, Joajard, or Cunningham for sort of an offensive gun focus, thinking a lot of things like on the War Spite or something like that, if you're building her to use on that ship. Or you could just make it a meme and double down on what Big 7 is giving you and slot in a high-level Ciliax and a high-level Galler and get upwards of 21 plus percent shell damage increase. I mean, it's over. Don't get hit by that combo. Well, that's been a bit of an overview of the six Azure Lane commanders we have so far. What are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments below. Who did you get in your free crate this week? Have you bought any additional crates to try to get the whole roster of them? And how are you building them and how are you using them? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks an awful lot for listening, everybody. I really appreciate it. And as always, stay salty, Commanders.